I'm not going to take a lot of time. I want to tell you a quick story. Hilla has accolades that are as long as I am tall, and they are in the program. We love her. She and her family have been coming and joining us, and she and her husband, Rainer, have been speaking for three, four years now. Four years. Uh, and we appreciate the effort that they make to get here. Hilla said to me, Hilla is unopposed, the last speaker of the conference. And I heard a rumor that she was concerned. Why was she last? Does nobody like her? <laughs> it's the last talk. Everybody's going to be gone. She had some concerns. So when I, saw, when I saw her this week for the first time, I explained to her that here in this country, we save the best for last. <laughs> She was quite concerned. <laughs> she didn't realize what we were doing. She felt much better. A moment ago, over in the vendor hall, she was nervous. What did she do? I have to go find a bird to hold. <laughs> she feels better now. Pretend we're all birds and you'll be great. It is my honor to introduce Hilla Nyman. <laughs> I am working as a parrot behavior consultant in Germany and in some other countries near Germany, like Switzerland, Hungary, Austria, Belgium, and I do a lot of in-home consultations. And um, I found that a lot of problems that arise in keeping parrots as pets are due to communication problems because the owner don't understand their birds. So I thought talking about communicating with another species might be a good topic for my next presentation here. It's all about communication. This here is Kenro. Kenro is a little Corella and he's about um, five to six years old now and he's one of my clients. When I met Kenro first, he was a streamer and he began to feather pluck. And he had communication problems with his owner. As you see now, he's very, very happy, hopping on the grass, turning around. It's in perfect plumage and he doesn't scream anymore. So, what happened? I will come to this back later. When we take parrots into our homes, this has to be a companionship of respect and tolerance. When you go into a pet shop or to a breeder, how many parrots raise their wings and say, I want to go home with you? <laughs> Have you ever seen this? No. <laughs> we don't ask them, we choose them and bring them into our homes. And then they have to live with us. So we are responsible for their emotional and their physical well-being. It's our responsibility. And this has to be influenced by respect and by tolerance. All the uh, parrots that you see in this presentation are client parrots. It's type one, and two parrots, yes. So I know them all by name and I know the owners. So, when we talk about respect and tolerance, we have to admit their physical needs. We heard a lot about physical needs in this uh, AFA, and it was wonderful to see how you all developed in the years. We talk about play. Play is very, very important. A parrot that does not play, does not exercise, it's great. Because play is exercise for the brain. When a parrot does not play, only sitting on a perch, it's not only bored, it does not exercise its intelligence. So play is very, very important for a bird. Exercise. It was in another presentation where somebody asked, how do I exercise my bird? Well, even if a bird is not flighted, it's not so difficult to exercise a bird. When you've got a cage, don't make the branch from one cage to the other cage or the perch, uh, to, to the other end of the per, uh, cage. The perch should not be so that the bird can say, oh, I just did two, three, four steps and then I'm on the other side of my cage. This is not exercise. The middle has to be free. They have, have to hop in their cage. Don't bring them everywhere, even if they are clipped. I tell you about a presentation that I had a few weeks ago. They had two African greys. They lived in a home with uh, the owner that was a young woman and their parents. And they lived in a separate room and there was a wire between the living room and the room of the birds. And when the owner, the uh, woman came home in the evening, she opened the door and the birds could get out and live in the living room with them. The problem was that the male did totally havoc. He went into the living room, bit the woman the, uh, of, uh, room, um, of the owner, the mother of the owner, and then he destroyed the whole furniture. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievable. 
And then he went back to his room again, and he had the total atten attention of the whole family. It was a little monster. <laughs> I went there, and we had a little um, talk about the birds, and then we opened the door. And the female flew out again, and it was, a it was a nice bird, it was a friendly bird, we played with her. And then the father of the owner stood up, took a perch, and went to the room. What, what, what are you doing there? Oh, I take the male out. And I said, why? He's fully flighted. Oh, we do this every evening because he needs his exercise. But stepping up on a perch is not an exercise. <laughs> you see? So, as a sit down, if he wants to come out, he can fly. Yeah, but we do it every day. No, you don't do it anymore. Because this little bird is driving the whole family crazy, and you do him every favor, and you get all the attention he wants. If he wants to be here, he can fly. If he doesn't fly, he don't, he, he's not allowed to live here. Just let him stay where he is. So the bird was sitting in the living room, in the in the bird room. The family was sitting in the living room, and they were also this way. Oh, he's, he's not coming. He's not coming. He's not coming. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. He should get out. He's not happy. I said, Well, he's not happy. Wonderful. You were not happy two months ago because everybody was crazy because this bird was driving everybody crazy here and here. So let him be where he is, and if he wants to come out, he can fly. So this is exercise. <laughs> yeah. Don't move your bird around. If it can't fly, let it walk. <laughs> yeah, this is exercise. It, for, for flip birds, I always recommend that you use stairs. Put a treat on every step and then let them use the stairs up and down. Have you ever seen a really, really fat Amazon moving up the stairs? It takes hours. <laughs> yeah, but it's exercise. Cuddling. Cuddling is another thing. I had a consultation about two years ago. Um, it was in Bavaria. There was um, an owner who owned six or seven Amazons, and one was Jacob. Jacob is a blue-fronted Amazon, and he's, he does not fly. He can fly, but he does not. I don't know why. And he's highly aggressive. And he's living in a big aviary, about eight um, was that, quadrat meter? square meters. And the owner can't go into the aviary be, be, uh, without being bitten. The problem is not only that she's bitten, but every time she's, she's blood, she faints. She drops on the floor immediately. Whoop, there she is. <laughs> so it's very really difficult for her to clean the aviary and to enrich the aviary because every time she goes in, he's wah, running to her, trying to bite her. <laughs> and so she has to be very fast. <laughs> At first, I was smiling like you did because it was very, very funny seeing her running through the aviary trying to get it clean <laughs> and running out again. But the problem was not only that Jacob was so aggressive, he didn't have any company. He was never touched. Nobody cuddled him. There was no, he, he, he kept everybody in this aviary. He was totally alone the whole day. And this was so sad. You see? Being so aggressive that nobody ever near you is such a sad thing. So what we did with Jacob was he got a balcony. He got a training and every time the owner serves the aviary, he gets into his balcony, there he gets a treat, the balcony is closed. She can do it all in a, uh, in a slow motion and then he gets back into his aviary again after that. And then we try to find him a mate, a female. And I went to a friend of mine who's got a big breeding facility and, and he's the strongest woman you got. <laughs> Yeah, and she needs to be about 12 years old. So go into your ivory, find me a female blue fronted Amazon that is really tough. And this bird I brought back to Jacob. So now he's got a mate. He's not really happy at the moment, but he's not alone. <laughs> and he needs to be friendly because this woman tells him directly what, he, what she wants. <laughs> got you, baby. So cuddling, being touched, preening, all those kinds of things are really important. Grooming. When a bird I see a lot of birds that have long toenails, and the owners are not able to clip them. I was at a um, facility a few weeks ago where there were a lot of macaws, um, a lot of cockatoos, and they all had very, very long nails. And all the beaks needed to be trimmed, but the owner was not um, comfortable with that, and he always needed a vet. So when the vet came over, about half a year, he needed to trim all those birds. It's very, very... Um, that when you cannot do it on your own, and when your keeping is so worse that all these nails grow and grow and grow and grow till the bird can't grip anymore. So these physical needs, despite all the other needs that they've got, that we have heard through all the years, are very, very important to be met. But we don't only have physical needs. We also have emotional needs. 
And we haven't talked about emotions in the last day, as far as I know. Attention. Do your birds love attention? <laughs> do you love attention? What do you think when somebody talks to you and you feel a so and they tell you a story and you, they get your full attention, you listen. This is very important to you because then it shows that you are valuable. So when I get home and my birds hear my car, even if I get out and say, Wow, I'm back! You hear it. To the other strike of the street, no, no problem. Attention is very, very important for birds. <coughs> Company. Nobody wants to be alone. That's quite normal. Everybody wants somebody who be, who's with him. So when you are living with a bird, even with a single bird, make sure that he's not longer alone than for four hours. I always say being alone longer than four hours means that I put a four to uh, five-year-old child children in the middle of a traffic road. Being alone, standing there, oh my God, I'm so afraid. I must take responsibility of my own. You must remember this is prey. All these birds are prey. Even a big macaw is prey. So when he's alone the whole day, he's responsible for his safety. Nobody takes care of him. What I often recognize is when owners then get home, the birds immediately begin to eat. Because they can't eat when they are alone. Because they can't watch their football and then they watch the surroundings. So they stay hungry the whole day. And then they begin to eat because they haven't eaten the whole day. Because you are home, you take responsibility, you take care, you look who's ha what's happening around you. <coughs> Company is very, very important for birds. Visual and vocal contact. Contact calls. We all know what contact calls are, aren't we? The bird calls you from another room, especially the African Grey owners know, know that. Yeah, they talk a lot. Visual contact. I know of a bird, an African Grey, who was living with his mate in a cage. Oh, she was so cute. And she always screamed when the owner was out of the room. And the owner said, well, the male is chasing her all around the cage. It's horrible. I can't believe it. He's so bad to her, so mean. And I said, well, I, I can't believe it because the maid was always friendly. So what we did was we took a mirror and we placed the mirror so that the owner could see the cage and the bird could not see the owner. What was happening was whenever the owner went out of the room, the female began to scream as hell. They're going to die. And the maid was sitting there <coughs> doing nothing. And when she came back, she was standing there. <laughs> so the owner saw, always thought that the male was chasing the female. She, it didn't. It was, she was so funny. <laughs> yeah, this is when you, when you meet those birds. Unbelievable. Okay. So, living together with a parrot can be very funny and very, um, you can benefit a lot. This is Bebo. He's living with his female and with two uh, blue and gold macaws, and uh, um, La Lenny and Lara. And this is the owner. You can see how happy they are all together. This here is Murphy. And the owner, and this is Coco. And you see, all those birds are really happy with their owners. This here is Felix, orange crested cockatoo with the owner, and this here is Paul, oh he's a wonderful bird, he wear a lot about um, aggressive uh, blue fronted uh, male Amazons, but he's older, he never bites, he's always friendly, he loves a lot, a lot of tricks, so it mustn't be that way. And this is also Murphy, Murphy is a very common name for good blue and gold macaws, I believe. Okay, so talk to me. When we talk about conversation, con uh, conversation, uh, communication, um, and you go to an owner and says, what does your bird do? Oh, he talks. This is the first thing I always hear. Oh, he talks. And then they can, he can talk this, and he says this, and that, and that, and that, and that. And um, almost always they know what they are saying. Not in the direction we may mean it, but in the direction they mean it. Yeah, uh, everybody's nodding there. They know what they are saying, yeah. And there are a lot of uh, publications about communication. When you go on the internet and you surf on Alcedia, you surf on Science Direct or New Science or Home or um, Plus One or something like that, you find all those, all those kinds of stuff. And I would, don't want to bore you with all those things. There are only a few. Most of them are about African grace, but I'm sure if we would search on other species, we would find any, uh, some other really interesting stuff. Okay. But what we are really talking about is body language. 
Oh, not good. Not really good. What does this mean? I'm gonna get you. Why <laughs> well, I'm gonna get you? Yes. Well, I had another picture that was the same, and I showed you on a presentation. And asked about body language, and everybody says, "Oh, this is a highly aggressive African grey." No, it only ruffled his feathers because I made the picture. And I was happy that I got this one, and it was only ruffling its feathers, and it looked like it was aggressive. And at, at that moment, I thought, what? And just a moment, again. Uh, this doesn't work. Only with pictures, it's nice, but it's not enough. Adrian, please. Except my husband's African great. But it's just like that. She does the head down, the eyes spinning right over the wings up. And yeah. With him, she's playing. If I did that, there would be blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, sometimes it's content. Yeah, this is what I can next time to because uh, body language is a way to communicate with, it, with your own species because you know we are human and I understand your body language and the other species also as well. And with another species, I have to learn this communication and it's a way to express the feeling of a living being. You all thought, wow, aggressive. It was your first intention. That was what first came to your mind. So you learn how to read this body language and you know how this bird is feeling. And this is very, very important. Okay? So, when we deal with feelings in birds, nobody contacts me and says, Oh, my bird is so happy, what can I do? <laughs> so, most, um, or almost, almost always, it's uh, like aggression and fear. You see? Aggression means this. When I got these pictures, I phoned the owners and said, why did you make these pictures? You told me your bird bites you. Yeah, but I think you needed to prove uh, prove for <laughs> Oh, my dear. Nobody should be bitten only because I need a picture of it. I know how it feels. <laughs> when you tell me your bird bites you, I believe you. Believe me. Yeah. So when I saw this picture, I said, oh, God. Hopefully. I phoned her and said, are you okay? Are you all right? Did you see the, 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 the doctor afterwards? No, this is not really funny. And this should never happen to you. Because it destroys the trust that you have in your bird and the trust that the bird has in you. It destroys your whole relationship. And what next happens is you get a Jacob. You don't let him out of the cage. He stays there, he's alone, and he's never touched. And you won't let that happen to you and to your bird. Yeah, okay? The next one is fear. Fear is very, very serious. So, I've chosen Amazons for this presentation because their body language is so obvious, okay? We could do other species as well. We've got about 80s in our um, keepings as pets, and then you won't go come to the ruffles because we have also to do all this body language in a row. You see, so I chose only one. This year, I do Amazons in the Feral Park Bochum. This year is Pet Berta. Pet Berta is a well-trained bird, and she's totally relaxed. You can see it in her pose where she's sitting there. <clears throat> What else? Another camera because it's often filmed. You can do a lot of tricks. And this is another bird, and you see the body posture is totally different. He's high, all the feathers are at the body, and she does, he doesn't like the camera. He's not happy with the situation. Berta knows all those things. She's used to that. This bird was in a, a home consultation, he saw the camera. It's very big, it's very dark. And then he tried to flew away. He leans his body over, all his feathers are at the body, and then he pooped. This is a real sign, I want to go, I want to make myself not so heavy when I fly. And then he made this, I want to fly away. And this is a sign for me that the bird is really, really in a fearful situation. This is another parrot I don't know personally, but it's in a parrot park Bochum. And he was kind of curious, I don't know really who you are, but I, I, I observe you. And if you come any nearer, I fly away. Yeah, this is the situation when a bird behaves like that, he's fearful. He doesn't know what to do. Okay. So, what happens when we get in problems? Just watch this. Hi, Papa. Yes, my Papa. Come on, Papa. Oh, Papa's a good young man. Come on, Papa. Come on. Ivo, come on, Papa. Come on. Louis, 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 no, not good. Ivo, not good. Come on, Papa. Come on, Papa. 
Stan Chambers, Chambers, New York, Chambers, Lewis, Chambers, Lewis, Papa Zagudion, eh? Where's the Papa Zagudion? Where's the Papa Zagudion? Huh? Yeah. Where's the Papa Yawa? Where's the Papa Yawa? Yawa, Ibo Me. Ibo, oh, the cast member, Ibo, Me. Bibo, nee. Come on. Hi. Huh? Hi. She's not actually. Come on. Bibo, wolf. Bibo, I wolf. That's just a good thing. Come on, wolf. Bibo, wolf. What did you see? Bibo. Oh, no, no, not all together. See? Yes, sir. That's what they do. Yeah. In reinforced behavior, yes. What else did you see? You couldn't see the body language because the bird's on the shoulder. And you don't see the body language when the bird's on the shoulder. And when you see the body language when the bird's on the shoulder and you turn your head around and the bird is around, then you get bitten in the face. So whenever your bird is on your shoulder, your face is always in the, in the other direction. You can love your bird there, but Face is in the other direction because you only have two eyes and there are no other one in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you won't get them back. And every time the bird did something that the bird shouldn't do, like yeah, biting the finger, he, I, he afterwards reinforced it. Can we play it again from the beginning? Yes, Papa. Ah, there is Papa. Oh, Papa, that would be your man. Come on, Papa. You want him to come? Hi. What? Hi, Papa. What? Louis, Louis, look, they, net boots. He won't net boots to me. Come on, Papa. Come on, Papa. Come, Shailus, Shailus, your Shailus, Louis, Shailus, Louis. Papa, that would be your man. Where's the Papa Zagudion? Where's the Papa Zagudion? Huh? Yeah. Where's the Papa Yawa? Where's the Papa Yawa? Yawa, Bebo Me. I won't do that. Bebo, oh, he has to have to. Bebo, Me. Bebo Me, come on. Hi. She's not actually, come on. You get the sweet for being the Papa. Bebo, oh. I would bite you. I, I get all that attention, and afterwards I get a treat for biting. <laughs> this is when you, but you don't respect the body language and that. This you don't. The whole video is like this. Hey. Continues through the whole video. Must have found it. Papa in the key, huh? Yeah. And then he asked me, "What can I do that the bird don't don't bites me? <laughs> don't reinforce him ever there on this pay, on this bird. So I don't want to. This bird shows me I don't want to step onto your hand." With his whole body language, he said, I, and I don't want to bite you. He moved the hand away, and the owner didn't listen. This was what happening. Yeah, okay? So, when we have a problem word, when we have a problem behavior like that, we totally focus on uh, solving the problem. And this is where I step back from all those kind of um, enriching the um, environment and enriching especially the food that the bird gets. When I work with a parrot and with the owner, the first thing I do is I change the diet. I change the diet to a healthy and totally extruded diet and as boring as possible. I don't want the bird to starve. Never. I want all the healthiest nutrition in the bird's bowl, but I don't want it to be as nice as it, as it used to be. Normally I work with parrots, always the same size, everything is always the same color, it is always the same taste and it's very, very healthy. And all the other things the bird wants, he gets from my head. Yes. Definitely. If you want a piece of apple, if you want a grape, if you want a nut, if you want a sunflower seed, you go to me and you are friendly. That's it. You won't stop. You've got the food, food, all your food in your, in your cage, but it's totally boring. Definitely. This is how I work and it works normally very, very well. The owners then say, oh, but I want to enrich my bird's life. You can do afterwards, when the bird has learned that it should behave in your home. But during that learning process, you need a second to reinforce that. So, 
when you've got all those stuff like fruit, like vegetables, like nuts, like seeds, all those things in your cage, and your bird eats it every day, what do you need, what do you give them to reinforce? Chocolate? <laughs> Chips? Something like that? You've got no reinforcer because your bird is eating so healthy and he's got all those kind of stuff in its, its, its cage. It doesn't work. You need a reinforcer. But on the other side, you need to make sure that there are no nutritional deficiencies in your bird's diet. So this is the problem that I have. I have no reinforcers and then I say, oh, okay, we change. We change for a while to a totally extruded diet, totally healthy and totally boring. This is how I work. Okay. This is another bird, a bird I worked with when we try to solve the problem. We must keep in mind that each parrot has its own body language. There are only, always slight differences. No bird is like the other. My body language is different than yours, and yours, and yours. We don't have the same. And we know each other from our body language, yes? Okay. Each parrot has its own history and experiences with humans. Sometimes we are lucky, we have no bad experience if the birds are healthy or like the ones we had in the exhibition here. And they are happy and they go to everybody and they are very, very sweet. But sometimes we have birds that are very, very aggressive and we don't know why they are so aggressive. And we can't find out because it's a bird that's about 35 years old, it's got a long history and we can't know, we can't know how it lived before. So we try to find out. Each parrot has its own character. If we put all the blue and gold in a row, and all the African gays in a row, and all the eclectus in a row, they would all look alike, wouldn't they? Yes. And each bird is another character. So it's not always that easy. We cannot say, oh, every blue and gold behaves like that. It doesn't work. I know very, very shy blue and golds, and I know very, very um, aggressive blue and golds. This bird here, was living with the blue and gold in a cage. I came into the home, and the first thing the blue and gold was a female did, it flanked into the cage. Wow, I want to bite you. And this bird was so, so shy, she went to the back of the cage and made this one. She, made, she was so unhappy with, my, with the situation, and she was so afraid of a stranger that she tried to get a, as far, far away from me as she could. What I did then is, I sat down at the table with the owner, and I told him, give me some treats, the birds know. They gave me some pine uh, seeds, and I put them on the floor. And then we talked, and we had a coffee, something like that, and during that time, I always took some seeds and offered it the bird. And at the beginning, the blue and gold always met it, ah, I bite you. <laughs> yeah, and I took the seeds away. You don't get anything from me when you bite. And during that time, we were, all, we were all talking together, and I didn't pay any attention to the bird. Every time I looked at the harlequin, he was sometimes there. He couldn't stand it that I was looking at the bird. He couldn't stand eye contact. So what I did is I never made eye contact to the bird, but I always offered them some seeds. And I got nearer the cage and nearer the cage. And after an hour, I was able to feed the blue and gold through the bars. Only the blue and gold, because the harlequin was so afraid that she was always in the back of the cage. After that, the owner told me, oh, I can't let them out because, out because um, the blue and gold bite every stranger. I said, well, we can try. We opened the cage, the blue and gold went out, and she didn't bit me. She was sitting there, and she learned during that time where I was sitting at the table that I didn't do her any harm, that I offer her some seats. She learned my body language. She saw that I do her no harm. And then the harlequin went out. And she flew on top of, the, um, of one uh, shelf there and sat there. And when she was out, she was able to make eye contact with me. I even was able to make a photo without her being so, um, so uh, afraid. You see, she's so afraid, whenever she's in trouble, she tries to pluck. She didn't pluck during that consultation. Because she had the opportunity to see, okay, she is doing me no harm. She doesn't make any eye contact to me. She ignores me totally. She offers me some seed, but I won't take seeds from her hand. So I respected her body language, and she could, was able to read my body language. This is very important. Your birds read your body language. When you come home and you have had any trouble with your work or something like that, and you come home in a bad mood, and you go to the cage and say, Oh, sweetie, how are you today? Wow. <laughs> I wouldn't make contact with you at all. <laughs> so, every bird has its own body language, and we have got our own body language. It's very important. And every parrot has its comfort zone. This bird has a very, very large comfort zone. I know a lot of birds that don't have a comfort zone. They say, Ah, oh, there you are, we can play. Whoop, 
they are up on you and they want to play with your ears, with your eyes, with your necklace, something like that. But that depends always on the bird. No bird is like the other bird, okay? Good. Be patient. You don't solve a problem in a week, or in two weeks, or in three weeks. Sometimes it takes one or two years to solve the problem, because the bird doesn't know that it has got a problem. It believes that its behavior is okay, it works, because you reinforce it without do, uh, wanting to do so in the past. So, when you change your behavior, the bird has to learn that it has to change its behavior too, and that this doesn't work in a day. Respect the body language of your own bird. This is very, very important. Learn the body language and respect it. Give the bird the control over the situation. Show your bird, okay, I see what you feel and I respect what you feel. This is very important for companion birds. Never use any pressure when you try to communicate with your bird. Never, ever. I want you all to close your eyes. Everybody close their eyes? Okay, so you are in a cage. You are a parrot. You sit in your perch and you play with your toy. You are happy. The family is around you and suddenly somebody is coming to your cage and opens the door and a hand goes into the cage and somebody says, up! And you say, oh well, I don't want to go get up. No, I'm just playing. I don't want to come out. I'm happy with it. And then you turn away with your body and then the hand goes nearer to you and says, up! <laughs> And you say, well, uh, there is the bath and the wall behind me and I can't move any further, so uh, <clears throat> I will take this hand away with my beak. Friendly. You turn the hand away. And then the hand presses, goes against you and says, ah! And then you say, well, I went back with my back. I showed you I don't want to get up. There is the wall behind me. You, you, me. I can't go any further. And you haven't listened to my body language. And now I bite you. And I know if I bite you, you go away. <laughs> yeah, worked. You can open your eyes. This is what happens when you put pressure on a bird in a cage. Never do this. When you see the bird doesn't want to step up, move your hand away. Never insist to get a reaction. Interact with me, interact with me, interact with me. Play with me, play with me. No. When a bird doesn't want to play, just leave it alone. Let it do what it wants to do. And never, ever try to insist in getting a reaction or sympathy from your bird. This is what we told Janice. Janice said, okay, I would love my bird to love me, to, do, to, to be a com in company with me, to be my friend. Well, he will be, but not if you put too much pressure on the bird. You can say, well, I'm here, I can offer you a treat, I'm always here for you whenever you ask me, but I do not beg for, uh, for your sympathy. Yeah? Never do this. Use verbal communication if possible. I always see this in, um, in uh, training sessions. They so do something with their bird and they don't talk to them. Yeah. They do the turnaround, <laughs> and the bird gets a treat. <laughs> And say, well, uh, it's okay when you say good, something like that, or good, uh huh, <laughs> good. <laughs> well, birds use their voice. We can do the same, no problem. So when you do something with your bird, just tell your bird what you are doing, and it will run to this um, what it should do in the future, no problem. Okay, this is another case. This bird is Mowgli. Mowgli is now about uh, three and a half years old. There, he was very young, and um, just wait. Like, and uh, when the owner sent me this video, she um, is a, um, working as a, a, a police police officer, and she was near her exam during that, and she had to learn after her work. And Mowgli was during the day alone, and when she he was she was at home, she let him out to play, but she had to learn on the other side during that time. And she said, well, I can't learn at the moment because he's so nervous in the evening. And look what was happening, because she was trying to do some things on the computer. La 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 la. Uh-huh. What can I do to get in trouble? 
nothing to do. Ah, I know. I am young. Nothing to do. Yeah. Wah. Zurück. And you see, she's getting angry because you know she's got to learn no. exams here. Zurück. Uh huh. Zurück. Was? Oh, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being on her shoulder, being quiet after eight days, eight hours in the cage without company. Movie <laughs> lessons. <laughs> That this work, never, never in a lifetime. You see, she's really getting angry about it. Now, this bird is now one of the best educated birds I know. He's three and a half years. He's going to recall training. Um, he brings uh, things. He's, he's very well educated. But at that time, little, you see this? <laughs> I want to have fun. I want to play. And she didn't understand the body language. She thought it was mean. He wasn't. She said, oh, my bird is biting me and he's, uh, he's aggressive or something like that. But do you see any aggressive body language? No. Not at all. He's bored and he wanted to play. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So, knowing the body <laughs> Okay, pause it. Yeah. So, this was so sad because the bird loved the owner and the owner loved the bird. Only she had to do this exam and this bird was so bored during the day. So what I recommended in that case was, okay, the bird got an immediate recall training. And she did a recall training every evening in the home so that he flew as well from one side to the other till he was sitting there. <laughs> I want to sit, please let me sit. Yeah. After that, he got, was sprayed so that he could uh, clean his feathers and he got a new toy, all those kind of stuff, and then he got his meal. So, in time, the uh, problem was solved. So, okay, another problem behavior: the problem of Napoleon. Napoleon <coughs> is an African Grey. He's about six or seven years old, and he's regular at the training session in the Paradise We do the training sessions um, about six to seven times a year. It's about two hours in the morning, where the birds um, learn some new things, socialize with other birds. The bird owners meet each other. It's about three hours in the morning, and we have a lot of fun with them. A lot of birds um, you know, learn new tricks during this training session, despite Napoleon. Napoleon knows all the tricks that his female Sophie knows, and she's very well trained. And he does them regularly at home, but never, never in the Paris Park Bochum. He was there, sitting there, doing nothing, totally nothing. In the, uh, in the beginning, he was up on the floor, watching all the other birds and saying, well, this is nothing to do with me, because I don't do anything here. And the owner was so disappointed, and his wife was working with Sophie, and Sophie was coming and flying and bringing stuff and doing the turnaround, all those kind of stuff, and she was always standing there, well, he works. And Napoleon didn't do nothing. I would, make you a video, I would have shown you a video of Napoleon doing nothing, three hours, sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> for one year, yeah, seven training sessions with this bird sitting on a perch doing nothing. The next year, we can't do this in winter because the winter the weather conditions are so bad. Now. The next year, I said, Well, baby, I will get you. I will not allow you to behave in this way like anymore. So, what I did was, I changed the aviary. He got the aviary on his own. It was very, very small. He got the play stand and no other bird, and it was totally quiet in there, and totally boring. And he was not allowed to move on the, uh, to the ceiling anymore because there were no, no opportunities. I made sure that they were, there was no possibility that he could do that. There he began his training. He did the turnaround the first time. We were so happy. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> then, the next training session, he got another uh, parrot in his... Um, Aviary, a very friendly parrot, her name is Paula, and she's not, she doesn't fly regularly. And she's very well trained. I wanted Napoleon to see another African Grey that does a trick, but not his normally female. He should exercise with his brain. And I wanted the owner to exercise with his bird on, an, on another perch, like this one or this one. It worked. Paula is plucked, you will see her in another video. Then we changed from the play stands to perches. 
in this small aviary. And then we added another male. I wanted him to have some rival in the situation. I added Paula and then I added another male to see, ah, there are also other greys. We were also in the small aviary. It took me six months to get this video. This is the bird that doesn't move. I always want them to put them on the other side of the perch, that the face of the bird is in your direction. When you do it the other way around, the back of the bird is in your direction. And this is not comfortable for the bird, so we always put them on the other, on the other side. Yeah. This is a female to feed. You see, all the branches are here very thick, and they are um, not um, stationed, because they have a buckle. What's that and pony? They wiggle, yes, they wiggle. We put some green also in the... We couldn't have done this a year before, because then Napoleon would have gone crazy. But we solved this problem, and the owner, owner was so happy with this bird, it was unbelievable. Solving the problem. This is Coco. This is the first video I got from Coco. Okay, Coco was at that time four months old. He was a blue fronted Amazon, or is a blue fronted Amazon, and he was in his second home. He was four months old in his second home. He was sold when he was about eight weeks old and the former owner, um, I think, he hit him. He was very, very afraid of hands. And the owner was so unhappy with him because he had a root pointed Amazon before. It was totally tame and lived in the, in the home uh, for about 20 or 40 years. I don't know now. And every time when I talked to her, she said, but my other Amazon did that and that. Well, that Amazon was gone and it was a young bird and it was afraid of hands, so it didn't help. What we did then, we educated her to respect the body language of Coco. Every time he showed any sign of fear, she had to immediately stop and take a step back to show Coco, it's okay, you are safe. I only serve your cage when I look away and in any other way I interact with you. And when you show that you are in fear, I move away. What we also did was a light, a light clicker training, not so much to show um, the owner that Coco responses, that he takes treats from the hand, and that he can follow the target, so he doesn't need to be touched. And then we went step by step by step, and then I told the owner, well, you can now open the cage. I can't open the cage. I said, why, why not? Because he's not biting you anymore. You can train with him in the cage, so you can train with him out of the cage, but he will hurt himself. I said, why? Why would this bird hurt himself? He will fly out of the cage and he will immediately be hurt because he's not used to the surroundings. I said, well, it's an Amazon. What should happen with a flight at Amazon in a small living room? And she said, I can't do that. Okay, I made another appointment and I went there and we opened the cage. And Coco went out and flew immediately through her right in the kitchen and in the sink. Bam, bam, bam. And there he was sitting in the sink doing nothing. And she went there and said, oh my dear, my bird is dying. I said, no, it's not dying, it's only sitting in the sink, just wait a few moments. And he was sitting there, you know, when they fly and they crash, so um, they lose their face. When you then go directly to them and rescue them, they say, oh, my God, yeah. don't, don't touch me. No, this is the first thing, and the other thing is, when you go there and you grab them, you behave like a predator, and then they bite you. And you don't know when you grab them if they are hurt. Normally they won't get hurt because the living room is not big enough. They don't get enough speed, speed to really get hurt. Maybe they get a little bit of blood on the uh, nose or something like that. But that's usually all. I seldom see that we've got a real injury in there because the rooms are not big enough. When we've got a real long flight, then there is so much, much speed that they might be in danger, but not in a normal living room. Okay, 
Then we began to work with him after he was rescued from the sink. <laughs> and half a year later, I got that video. Yeah, this is amazing. It's the same bird. You remember the same bird? Mm -hmm. Just kidding. Uh, Hi. I'm a Christian. Can you speak Christian? Hi. Stare at the coco. The trees are here somehow, the trees are here somehow. Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear. Turn around, Koki. Sehr fein. Oh, sehr bedächtig heute. Sehr bedächtig. Oh, ja. Wunderbar, ja. Ja, jetzt ist es ein Bird. Ja, 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 She was so happy. Good night, good night, We are not done yet. This bird was afraid of hands. We couldn't touch it. We've seen it in the other video. Now look. Next time we have to flip him up. you'd like to see in the end. Because when you see this video and you see this video, you won't believe that it's the same bird. Only half a year ago. Yes, Kashmir. Um, we began with the mild clicker training and with the behavior, and then it took about six months. Step by step by step, because she was so afraid to let the bird out of the cage. I had to go there after three months and tell her, well, it won't do anything to the bird and it will be happy and it will get its exercise out of the cage. It was very happy, uh, very important for the bird. And she was afraid to touch the bird because she thought when she touches the bird, it gets afraid again. So it was all in her mind, not in the bird's mind, in all her mind. It took about six months. Yeah, it might have done faster if she wouldn't have been so afraid to let the bird out of the cage. But it worked very, very well. It's one of the best educated male front of Amazon I know. Ah, uh, yeah, Dep depends, depends, yeah, but, but I think 50% of it, yes. Yeah. You, you might be right. Okay, another one. This is Fita. Fita is a young Senegal. And the owner contacted me because he had a, a, a pair, Elsa and Fita. And he said, well, I want to play with my bird, but my birds don't interact with me. And I said, what do you do with your bird? Oh, I try to get them on my hand. I said, well, can you send me a video? Yes, I can. eat your grapes and offer it then to your bird because it's the liver in your mouth dangerous for your bird. The next thing is it was half grape for a very small bird. How many half apples can you eat? Yeah, I think after three or four you are done. <laughs> 
your food. So, when Peter saw the grave, and he saw his owner and his arm there, he said, well, what are we going to do here now? Because I don't know what I should do. You see it in the face of the woman. Eh? What? He didn't even even tag. The female, Elsa, was biting during that time. She was hand chained, but every time she was on the hand, she was biting. So, Peter didn't step on because how should he? The arm was somewhere else there. He couldn't step on. And this was also recall training, but that doesn't work. And the female, when it was on the hand, was fighting the hand. And the owner was totally unhappy with his birds. He said, well, I wanted the birds to play with, but they don't play with me. Well, they didn't know, knew they should play with him in this way. So, we made a training and I showed him some tricks. And um, during time, he um, went, he was more comfortable with the birds and he could work with them very much better. So, we got this video after about... I think eight months. Ah yes, they're holding the fast. Ganz toll. Is it a good video? Ganz fine. Not biting anymore. Ganz fine. Yeah. Ganz toll. Yeah, video. Elf, I know it's fine. Na kam. Ja fein. Na kam. Ganz toll. Kam. Kam hier. Na kam. Ganz toll, dass du das gemacht. Ganz fein. These birds are so well trained, you can see them on YouTube, when they are alone. Then Elsa goes and puts, uh, Peter goes and puts some of the rings on the floor, and Elsa goes there and puts the rings up and puts them in a bowl. <laughs> you can see it on YouTube. It's unbelievable. They are very, very well trained, and if they don't get their training sessions every day, they are very unhappy. And the owner is a UPS driver. So it's not so that, it, uh, that, uh, every, um, that you have to be a well-educated person to train your bird. It's not a secret, it's only fun. And if you do it right, everybody can do it. Yeah? What we did is, we changed the diet, we found some really good reinforcers for the bird, and I showed him how to train a bird. We always begin with a mild turn around, where we use our voices turn around. Very good, not without uh, uh, saying any word. And then we show some other tricks like a recall training or like, like the to retrieve, and normally it works very, very well. Another problem this is Benny. Oh, Benny, come here, we give it wunder. Come, lecker gehen. Benny, lecker gehen, come. Benny. Come here. Paul? Benny, auf. Auf. Ah. Auf means in Germany up. <laughs> yeah, not auf, but auf. So you know what you say. Well, what did you see? See? Definitely. What did Benny do? <laughs> he went away. Yeah, he really tried not to fight. First thing is, never tell Golden Mac uh, Blue and Golden McCall what to do. <laughs> Nobody out there in the wild is standing there and tells uh, uh, an, an, an adult male McCall, do this and do that. <laughs> because they can't stand it. They don't like it very much. You can ask, would you please be so kind to interact with me? I will offer you a treat for that. But if you say, if you talk to a blue and gold and say, do this, and the McCall says, what? <laughs> do you want some trouble? You will get it. <laughs> yeah. So, what Benny did is he moved away. He tried everything that's possible not to bite. The, the one thing he left out was waving. I will not try to bite you. Please go away. Yeah, but it doesn't work because the owner insisted. Go on my hand, go on my hand, go on my hand. When we see the video again, can you do it again, please? He even made some displays. Oh, Benny, come here. Come, come As far as he could. Benny, come. He thought some behavior was, no, no, I don't want to bite you. Benny. He could have done that already. He's not aggressive. He's come here. Language. Oh. No rapper tells or something like that. He moved away. Okay. And then he bites something else. He can't do that. I don't know what to do. I don't want to bite you. Please, please, please go away. Benny, oh. The other bird is oh. standing there. Huh? <laughs> what? 
What are you doing there? Oh, and now he re- he's relieved. And the owner contacted me and said, Now a bird always bites you. I said, I would bite you too. <laughs> and then, he, um, what I normally do is, he, uh, he's got the video on his uh, computer and I, I've got the video. And then we go step by step. You see at the, um, at the 1 minute 20 he does that, at 1 minute 24 he does that. And then I explain the behavior. I said, oh, I didn't want to do that. I didn't knew that he was behaving like that. He was totally ignoring the body language because he didn't under- understand the behavior. And after that, we began a training session. Step by step by step. And about uh, two months ago, I got this video.